Hidden in the rural Midwest, in an unsuspecting metal building, is a team of engineers, machinists, and various technicians ready for almost any rapid prototyping or manufacturing challenge you could possibly dream up. This is Work Holding Evolved. This episode, we are at Flying S in Palestine, Illinois. It is said that French explorer Jean Lamont first gazed upon this region in 1678. He gave it the name Palestine as it reminded him of the biblical land of milk and honey. Palestine was chartered in 1811 while the area still belonged to Virginia and is one of the oldest towns in the state of Illinois. One of the things that makes Flying S unique is they're located in rural Illinois on a farm where the Shaw family has lived since the 1700s. The owners of Flying S are passionate about American manufacturing and encouraging both children and adults to consider a career within this growing industry. Flying S regularly provides tours for students and groups interested in learning more about what modern manufacturing looks like. Penny, thank you so much for letting us come in today. You're so it's welcome. Great to be here. Uh, I, I love your company. Uh, can you tell us about the Flying S Cadets program? Yeah, absolutely. So a few years ago, we kind of thought it would be fun, you know, for kids to be able to actually come here to an actual aerospace business and kind of see what we do. I, I mean, I guess that there's not many fun things to do necessarily for kids. And really what we wanted to do was show them that there's a point to this homework, the maths and the science homework that they're doing. And when they can see that you can have a career perhaps one day, you know, building things that go to space or things that to help our military, that, that's pretty cool. So we, we made this program, it started off very small, but um, just right before COVID, I think we had about 100 local kids come and build a rocket and launch a rocket in the wow. evening. <laughs> so that's kind of how they work, is we, we don't have an age necessarily. They can be any age, we don't mind. Um, a lot of families, they're gonna have little kids and bigger kids, and we don't discriminate, we, we don't mind. We just have things for the little kids to do as well. But usually the cadet program is for seven to 13 year olds, and they do all kinds of things, pine derby cars and egg drops and bridge building contests and all that kind of stuff. I agree, really cultivating that interest in manufacturing, kind of paving the way yeah. for the next generation. Oh, no. That's amazing, thank you for sharing. The Flying S team is able to fabricate anything from carbon fiber aircraft wings to intricate molds and machined parts. Well, uh, I want to thank you for inviting us to come to Flying S today. I've, I've been here a few times. I absolutely love it every time I get to come here. Uh, Peter, could you please introduce yourself and explain to us what it is that you do here at Flying S? Well, I love coming here too. <laughs> <laughs> good. I, uh, a good thing. I'm a manufacturing engineer and CNC machinist by trade. I. Um, I actually started back whenever we were in the garage across the road, okay. uh, which is about 12 years ago, and uh, crazy amount of growth that we've had. Yeah. We're very, very blessed. And so as a manufacturing engineer in the machine shop, a lot of what I focus on, Eric, is what machines we use, how much tooling and, uh, and parts are going to cost, what sort of work holding do we use, the cutters, um, the processes by which we make parts. That's kind of my role at Flying S. Yeah, uh, so it looks like we've got a few parts, we've got some fixtures, we've got some rock lock. Can you walk us through a typical application? Explain to us what we're looking at here. What we really want to do in the machine shop is reduce setup time. And we want to increase um, you know, the, um, our accuracy of when we trim parts, machine parts. And so for metal cutting, we've, always, we've been familiar with using competitors brands for uh, zero point clamping and that sort of a thing. But in our carbon fiber, it's, um, it's a real challenge to be able to do setups quickly. Our average batch size on a part like this is like one a day. Oh, wow. It's brutal. Yeah. So if you think of production, you think of production in the hundreds and batch sure. sizes. But we would literally take a part like this, which will take about a day or so for a, a layup specialist to lay up the carbon fiber. Then it has to cure in an oven or an autoclave. And so by the time a, a machinist gets this part, not only do we have to make it right the first time, no scrap is acceptable. The setup has to be really, really quick. And so what we've done is that we've designed uh, all of our processes around zero point clamping. And that's where Rock Clock comes in. Okay. Now, uh, we're looking at, uh, I'm assuming, one of those trim fixtures here. Can you explain to us like how that is designed and how you design that with manufacturability in mind? So I knew that in order to be successful in using Rock Lock to kind of change our lives, 
yeah. <laughs> in the machine shop and how we did things, we would have to make sure that everyone's on board from inspection, engineering, machinists, operators, everyone. And so what we do at Flying S is we really, des we really focus on DFM, which is designed for manufacturability. And so when an engineer helps design, this is a vacuum fixture for trimming in a composite part. Um, it's kind of a hard part. Imagine how you would hold on to this to make it, right? Yeah. So what we do is the engineers uh, use the rock lock pin system to mount to our um, multiplate receivers. And so um, it goes from how are we going to do this to are we going to use 96 millimeter or 52 millimeter pins? So Narrow down to those two questions. It's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. So for machinists like myself, an op one is very simple. We simply take a block, we put it in the machine, we pocket out some lightning holes, we deck off a face and we put in our pins. Now we've established how we hold it for op two when we flip it over. So in our machine, we would take a fifth axis multi-plate, we would put on a riser, then we drop on our fixture, and that's literally how we machine the part. And it repeats beautifully and no issues there. No issues there. And so not only are this is how we're producing the part, this is how we're then using that part in the machine to be trimmed later on. Um, we were looking for someone that had a nice self-centering vise that had risers and everything, and fifth axis was uh, who we used. Um, that was before Rock Lock. Sure. Um, when Rock Lock came, that changed everything for us, and then we kind of went all in. There's a lot of different ways to make parts, and some other competitors have some decent product out there that we really like to use, and they have their strong points. And so as a manufacturing engineer, I'm constantly looking for where's the best fit. And for us, the fifth axis uh, multi-plate receivers had uh, what we wanted for our abrasive environment, because carbon fiber is very abrasive. You know, I'm just showing you a couple examples of some of our smaller parts here, but for carbon fiber, they're oftentimes very large and they require uh, s multiple uh, receivers, lots of risers. We'll do stack ups where we'll use multiple, <coughs> multiple risers with angle plates and stuff as well. So what we found was with our competitors, their type of receiver system oftentimes would require pins inside and they were very difficult to maintenance and the problem with that is that because carbon fiber is so abrasive the the holes inside would get full of carbon so as we would as we would go to tighten the receiver um, we would get some wear inside here and with some of our competitors we can't actually maintenance that okay but so that's appealing so with the fifth axis very simple design easy for you to pull that apart get all that carbon out of there and get it back up and running quickly. Absolutely, just, just a, a, a one minute and we can have this thing cleaned out. And it works amazing. just as good as the first fixture you're putting in? Absolutely, yeah, Fantastic. the repeatability is amazing. Um, as you can see behind us, we have three receiver plates, two risers and an angle plate. Um, you know, that's a pretty standard setup for us and we have no problems with repeatability, positioning, um, everything is wonderful. So you walk through Flying S, you see a, a, a big investment in modular work holding. Uh, you see a lot of automation. What does that mean for the Flying S team? Well, this stuff is not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and oftentimes when people look at work holding, they're amazed by how, um, how expensive it is and how can you possibly justify it. But what we found was is that with us doing, um, you know, time is money, and we really want to spend as little time as we can um, setting up the machine. We really just want to have the spindle turning and cutting. And so in an effort to make our lives as machinists better, engineers make our inspection better, everything, we want to produce a good quality product for our customer. We use modular work holding like RockLock to be able to speed all of that up. So, you know, and if we're doing five or six setups the first part every day in carbon fiber on parts that we can't scrap out, um, setup is everything. I mean, I, it, cycle time is almost out the, at the window at that point. It's how long does it take to tear down and set up the next job. And by using rock lock, I mean, it's, it's to do a setup, we're literally twisting, what, two, three Allen wrenches. That's the whole setup. Yeah. I mean, operators love it. Engineers love it. Everything, everyone loves it. So what product features led you to select the, the rock lock brand? Well, um, ease of maintenance is a big deal for us. Um, economics, you know, whenever, Compared to a lot, of your, um, a lot of your competitors, this receiver is quite a bit less expensive. The fact that it's aluminum and um, 
and it looks great. <laughs> we use that. Uh, we use that all over the. Sh you know, a lot of our carbon parts are so big that we have to use lots of work holding. And so, um, at some point, you know, I say that the work holding cost can be justified, but it's, it gets to be a lot. And so, some of our larger parts that may use like six risers and the three, the three of these receiver plates. Um, and so, what we found with Fifth Axis is that the the cost was right, the main, maintenance was right. And then the fact that a lot of our parts, you know, we don't even really use that many vices um, in producing carbon parts. Most of it is just these pins. And so these pins, you know, are less than $100 for a set of four. And we have these receivers. And so what we're finding is our return on investment, and oftentimes is just one project. That's really good. Even though we have a stack up here, we don't see any repeatability issues. It's still just as accurate. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we've got three different components here, actually four different components if you count the 90 degree base at the top and, uh, and you're not seeing a, a stacking tolerance. No, and you know, a lot of this carbon trimming, we really, it's, it's all five axis trimming. And so we're having to really move that head around. In some cases, we're even coming from the back, like on this trim fixture. And so allowing us to be able to use these uh, risers and get away from the table and to be able to support that up high really is to our advantage to be able to trim these really quick. You know, a lot of, a lot of our carbon fiber competitors uh, hand trim a lot of this stuff. And then you start, having, uh, you start having accuracy issues and you start having quality related issues. You know, for us to do a CNC trimming um, using fifth axis, it's much faster and more economical for our customers. That's amazing. Thank you, Peter and Penny, for sitting down with us today. This place is truly amazing. It's great to learn about Flying S and how they're incorporating fifth axis into their manufacturing. Ask anyone the benefits of modular work holding, and the two answers you'll most likely get first are quick exchange and repeatability. Now, those are great answers, and honestly, probably the main reason people start looking into a system like Fifth Axis. But what Flying S does really, really well is leverage the commonly overlooked secondary benefits of modular work holding. They utilize the interchangeability and the standardization the pull studs offer to build fixtures faster and smarter. Flexibility to build those fixtures on the fly for complex geometries and non-standard materials, and they utilize control features to lock things like fixture and part orientation into place, ensuring quality and ensuring throughput. That's maximizing capacity, that's maximizing creativity, and that's maximizing value. That is work holding evolved.